Thank you for joining us again on the newsroom. These are trending headlines at this time. The federal government has requested the support of the World Health Organization, WHO, for the deployment of 18 rapid response teams to support the management of diphtheria disease in Bauchi, Kaduna and Katsina states. In an update presented on Monday, the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency had disclosed that no fewer than 836 cases of diphtheria had been confirmed in 33 local government areas across eight states. It further disclosed that 83 deaths have been reported from the confirmed cases, making vaccination against this deadly disease critically important, especially for children. In response, the WHO says Nigeria will receive 1,800 vials of diphtheria antitoxin on August the 2nd. President Bola Tinubu has arrived Kutanu to attend the 63rd independence anniversary of the Republic of Benin. Tinubu, who arrived Tuesday morning, was received by President Patrice Talon and some top government officials. The event marks the third time Tinubu will meet, the, will meet Talon since the former became president. Both had first met each other on the sidelines of the summit on new global financing pact in Paris, France in June 2023. Over 300 appointees of former Governor of Kogi State, Idris Wada, have commended Governor Yahaya Bello over what they described as the complete turnaround of critical sectors, saying they had decided to totally submit to his leadership, while also declaring total support for the candidate of the APC in the November 11 polls, Usman Ododo. Speaking during a courtesy visit to the government house in Lokoja, the leader of the delegation and former Commissioner for Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, Abubakar Ainoko, said the improvement of infrastructure in the state was made possible by the pragmatic leadership of Governor Bello. While thanking the governor for approving the courtesy visit, Ainoko commended Governor Bello for his magnanimity, which had endeared him to many. In business, the president of the Nigeria Chamber of Shipping, Amin Omar, has expressed concern over the negative impact that recently imposed on the recently imposed 30% company income tax on members of the International Association of Independent Tanker Owners would have on the revenue of the federal government. Omar said that while the tax regime may not affect refined petroleum products, it would, however, reduce the profit Nigeria would have made from crude oil sales. He added that it will also increase the cost of freight coming to Nigeria. In international news, Sweden's government says it has no plans to make sweeping changes to freedom of speech laws, but repeated it would look into measures that would allow police to stop the burning of holy books in public if there was a clear threat to national security. Sweden and Denmark have seen a string of protests in recent weeks in which copies of the Quran were burned or otherwise damaged prompting outrage in Muslim countries and demands that the Nordic government put a stop to the incidents of burning. A 57-nation organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC, has also convened an extraordinary session on Tuesday to discuss the recent development where it strongly condemned the Quran burnings. And in sports, Manchester United has signed a $1.1 billion deal with Adidas on Monday to renew their partnership with the kit supplier for 10 more years. The Germany sportswear giant became the club's official kit sponsor in the 2015-16 season, reuniting after 23 years and taking over from Nike after selling a £750 million deal, which was a record at the time. The new deal with Adidas will continue the partnership until June 2035. And that's all on the newsroom at this hour. Thank you very much for watching. I am Sinisola Adikon.